Welcome to this video on hedging and boosting, which is all about expressing doubt and certainty in thesis or research writing. So it's really about academic style, the way we write um, research and how we express ourselves. So research writers use hedges and boosters all the time and they use them to modify certainty. So in this video, I want to explain to you what hedging and boosting is. So let's look at hedging first. So many writers think that academic writing needs to always be strong and certain, assertive and direct, uh, because we're basing it on research. However, most academic writers modify their language through hedging. And a hedge is a word or a phrase that's used to tone down, to soften or to modify statements. It's really a key characteristic of, academic, of an academic style of writing. So hedging words or phrases direct the reader to the idea of arguments and claims rather than undisputed facts. So we, you know, if you've watched any of my videos, you will know that I emphasize the fact that academic writing is always about making an argument rather than about facts. And this is written into the style of our language. So tennis is, the most watched, uh, tennis is the most watched sport in the world becomes tennis is one of the most watched sports in the world. So the language is toned down just a degree. So the certainty is toned down. So there's a degree of certainty, but it's not total certainty. Research shows that experienced academics use one hedge word in every 50 words. This means that there's a hedge word in every two or three sentences. More hedges are used in the social sciences and humanities than in the sciences and engineering, but most disciplines use some sort of hedging. So when you're reading now, have a look at the authors that you're reading and see how many hedges they use. Think about your discipline, see what the writing in your discipline is like and how many hedges they, they tend to use. In academic writing, writers use hedges to express levels of doubt, levels of certainty, levels of confidence about research. And this introduces layers of subtlety, and it is a widely accepted practice. The 10 most frequently used hedges are assume, might, could, possibly, or possible, indicate, seem, likely, suggest, may, would. And sometimes hedges are used in clusters. It's possible that, it may be. So we use phrases of these words to create hedging phrases. There are three main reasons for hedging. Hedging allows authors to express themselves more precisely. I know it sounds like a contradiction that you're softening the certainty, but it allows a, a continuum of certainty. So rather than being absolutely certain, research ideas and results are often speculative and rely on interpretation and judgment. Hedging allows authors to show certainty and uncertainty with more accuracy. It's really the difference between certain knowledge, plausible reasoning, and supposition. So, for example, comics seem to encourage reading. Hedges also allow writers to head off challenges, any objections to their ideas. Hedging protects the writer from overstatements by limiting the claims to what they can support with reasoning. The more assertive a claim, the more likely it is to be challenged. Reading comics will cause an interest in reading. So hedges allow writers to present their claims in a more cautious way, which will offset any objections. And there are, of course, a range of, a range of cautions. Somewhat cautious, it seems that, it appears that, it's likely that. Whereas more cautious would be, it possibly, possibly the data suggests that. Perhaps the model implies this. Hedges also allow writers to project an honest and modest persona. And this helps to build connection with readers. Hedging increases the chance of persuasion and of getting our claims accepted. Firm, certain claims leave no room for discussion except an objection or a challenge. And assertions like that are also threatening to the reader. Throughout, throughout, uh, through hedging, we invite the reader to have an opinion alongside us rather than in opposition to us. This seems to suggest that comic books do. So example phrases, this might suggest, I believe it's possible that this may indicate. These are the types of hedging phrases we would use. 
Now, I do want to issue a warning, and there is a caveat to this, that there's a very fine balance. Too much hedging can make your claim seem too uncertain, and it will undermine what you are saying. So you don't want to overdo the um, hedges. I think that it may be possible to estimate that. So you want to really balance the hedging. So here's an example without hedging. 15 people were arrested. Known militants serving sentences were interviewed in local prisons. The arrests took place, and today prisoners in jails were, were interviewed. But no information has been provided by authorities on arrests. So it's very certain, there's no question that this didn't happen. But if we look at the same piece with hedging, 15 people were reported to have been arrested. Known militants already serving sentences are also understood to have been interviewed. The majority of arrests appear to have taken place over the past two days. Prisoners in jails were reported to have been interviewed. So far, little information has been released. So now there's a lot of uncertainty there. We don't know if all of this is true or not. So the tone is much softer. So while hedges express caution and uncertainty, boosters express certainty and confidence. So there'll be times when you want to be cautious and times when you want to be confident and certain. So boosters are words like definitely, always, certainly, undoubtedly, clearly, evidently. And they allow a writer to show commitment to a claim. So this is where you want to show your reader you believe in what you're saying. So the, the results undoubtedly show. You're telling your reader, this I know. But again, there's a warning here, you don't want to appear overconfident. You don't want to have too many boosters because it will make your writing sound overconfident and then it will invite a challenge from your reader. But think about this, you might want to be more confident in some sections of a paper or a thesis, such as maybe the introduction or the conclusion, and then be more cautious in other sections, like for example at the end of your results section where you're reporting on, on your results. Um, so think about where you want to show certainty and uncertainty. The key points of this video, we use hedges to show uncertainty and boosters to show certainty in research writing. We tend to use more hedges than bo boosters, but we definitely use both. Can you see what I did there? We tend to, but we definitely. If you want to find out more information on hedging and boosting, you can just Google um, Google these terms, but this one particular site that's coming up now will give you an idea of exactly what kinds of words to use and how to use them. Thank you very much for watching this video on hedging and boosting, and I wish you all the best with your hedges and boosters.